God creates the earth through making a sound, right? Yeah. I don't know what the exact word is in the book, but it makes a sound, right? Sound is part of it. I wouldn't say like, you know... Where's that sound, where's that, where's that sound being propagated through? Well, so, pressure. Jesus, good guy, say maybe not. Or something. He may have got some theology wrong. But the story, they did get their, their theology wrong. Right, yeah. Um, how do you know their theology is right, their teaching is right, and Jesus wasn't? Because they're both good. Hmm. You're saying the teaching of one is better than the other. So how do you assess Jesus, the value of the Because you haven't come up with anything which goes which goes against the Sikh teachings have, okay. for me to feel that the gurus are wrong. The Big Bang Theory can be disproven. Yeah, I was going to say, the Big Bang Theory is not, it's not anymore, not gospel truth to use the phrase. Yeah. And, if, and if they came to believe in a steady state universe, you could Sikhism shift its opinion on the creation? No, no. Even if the scientific opinion was that there is no, there's no steady, there's only steady state creation, yeah. we would still not believe in it. So you would, you would go against scientific... No, no, no. Because scientific change is always science. happening. Ch science science yeah. is always changing. So, right, like, for example, at the I mean, moment... Oh, okay. right. But you use your cell phone, but right? At, at the moment... Cell phone science no, is always changing. But at the moment, Moment, right, the the world except doesn't believe in reincarnation, right? Most of the world. So hold on, just so something question. Regardless of the creator, you would disclose something anti-science. Okay, no, that's a bit of a harsh. Is the creator of Sikhism? No, I, I wouldn't describe myself as anti-science. I would say that uh, the world was created for the by the creator. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Right.
very, but, very clever. But the interesting thing about Descartes is, you know, a lot of the experiences that he had about I think therefore I am and the whole meditative thing that he went through, it actually happened when he was trapped inside an agar uh, oven when the, uh, there was a French revolution going on around him. So he was trapped in this oven, small dark place for a while, whilst around him there's chaos and he's fearing for his death. And within that, he has this experience where he feels disembodied from his body, which then lets him later, say, later on say that he's in his body like a, a captain in a ship, because he's not part of that body. It's, the body is physical and corporeal, and he himself is infinite. So my view, my belief is, let me just explain. When I read Descartes having had that experience of meditation, what I thought was Descartes has had that experience, he's felt the pineal gland and everything else connecting him to God, and then later on, he's written this book to kind of, kind of explain that. Yeah? So I see him, I see him through the lens of meditation. Because I get what he's on about. But there is this experience and you do, you are infinite, your body is physical and the soul itself. And that they, you can separate, because I felt myself, my soul, so I, separate from my body. You can have that in a secular way, that can be a psychosomatic experience. Sure you can have it secular way, yeah, absolutely. I'm not disputing your point. Why do you believe it's not only psychosomatic? Why do you believe there's a real spiritual experience? Going? Because of my gurus. Okay, well, it's an argument from authority. If your gurus change their mind, you would change your mind. No, no, but the you're, guru's you're not going to change his mind. You're, 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 you're a graph <laughs> yeah. No, you can trust the gurus. Okay, because of their lives and how they, what they taught and how they lived, okay. I have so much faith in that they were okay. sent by the Creator. The second thing is, although you could say psychosomatic, what's interesting is how similar it is across all the Sikh community. So the experience. That's cultural normalization. But no, no, no. That's it's not really. It's, we had this argument last time. When we talk about this, that you're wearing a blue shirt, the reason we believe that it's a blue shirt is because everybody around us agrees that it's pretty much blue. And your eyes tell you it's blue. So, therefore, we can't just argue from the idea that we are just islands in our own mind and that there's no, no one else can relate to us. In reality, there is a lot of... No, but, but you're in a way saying that it's just that you've got this psychosomatic experience of God. What I'm saying is, Everybody I know who experiences God within the Sikh meditation experiences it in this way. Of course, that's because they're normalized to think like that. That's because they're told this is what you're... It's, it's placebo. You see, if you meditate like this, you do well, it properly, you that's, experience that's, like this. Well, and that's one. That's one. No, but, but see, any, be, any scientist, be, be any scientist would have two arguments very, very there. No one would... If people who weren't called even logically, to Sikhism had that experience. Even if you were logical. No, no, there. even if you were logical. Yeah, I have had met people that have not been normalized Sikhs and had the same experience. That would be more impressive. Now, it, but it's true. It's true and it's, it's therefore it should impress you. Who are these people? <laughs> well, Sufis. Tell a story. Sufis, for example. Can I respond? Islamic Sufis, okay, who, are, uh, who were there before the Gurus even came, are talking about the same thing. In fact, I would say that even St. Teresa in Norwich is talking about the same thing. If Lady Julian, sorry, not St. Teresa. Julian. Lady Julian of Norwich. Who's having this kind of... Um, in fact, mystics across the world talk about the same experience. But if the human brain, let's say, is hardwired by evolution to have these religious experiences, it's yep. so irrelevant that everyone has them because the human brain has evolved the same. Humanity has right. throughout the world. Right. So again, this is still... This could just be a biological sure. experience. Sure. But you see, the thing is, we're looking at the religion, the, the world, from two different lenses. So then we you're, trying to, to you're trying to find a way yeah. to explain what's going on yeah. without trying to point to the... Intelligent. I'm a Christian, I well, say. okay. Well, at the moment, but, the but on the debating side, it's possible. It's possible to find an explanation for everything. Okay. There, there is an. There is. It's possible to make an argument for everything that I'm saying using a non-religious point. But you're right. But you also, yeah. However, the reason why it's possible to explain everything without God is because God is like the greatest magician in the world. You'll never be able to pinpoint that God did it. That's fast. A lot of people say that. Yeah. But, 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 the Guru actually says that. The Guru says that he is Gabu the Gab. Okay, Gabu the Gab. Gab means the unseen. So he's the unseen of the unseen. Yeah. He's such an amazing person, you'll never know he did it. No, that's really and he'll do it in front of you. Can I go back to what you were saying earlier? So, you know, you follow the gurus because they, the lives they lead, the teachings they have, etc. Does that, does that mean if you found another excellent moral teacher, uh, someone who lived an amazing life, was charitable, etc., mm. who preached the opposite of Sikhism, such right. as maybe Jesus of Nazareth, who, as far as we know, does not preach reincarnation, does that mean you would then abandon your Sikh beliefs? That's really a, that's really a hard question because... Reincarnation is generally... Well, some, some Christians do believe in reincarnation. 
almost not. Well, no. The the Gnostics do actually are uh, quite close well, to. The, the Gnostics um, today are almost no one, and historically, yes, there have been Gnostics. Whether or not they were Christian, we can have a whole other discussion. The thing is, Gnosticism is quite similar to the Sikh belief. Oh, that's not. They, they killed the Gnostics. I'm not early, sure. Early bishops wait, 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 wait. Once we get fourth century onwards, maybe not. Okay. There are still people who follow the Gnostic uh, way in in Egypt. And in Oxford, I saw a oh. little leaf there. Um, I'm biased. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make is, is that within the Sikh faith, we we uh, we accept yeah, saints have existed in every religion, in every every culture. But Jesus, whom you say, I think you said you accept. Him. But see, see, whoever whoever I saw, if if a saint, if I met, if I saw somebody who was a saint, very ethical life, you know, he fits within the Sikh framework. That's fine, if he doesn't fit within the Sikh yeah, framework, the Sikh I frame probably would end up thinking, yeah. nah, but he, if he thinks that women are not equal to men, okay. I can't buy this So story. does this mean you don't think Jesus is a prophet? Because I might be misunderstanding No, no, says. we believe Jesus to be a saint. Oh, now, a saint, not a prophet. A saint. Okay. Because you see, the word prophet is like somebody who just speaks the word of God. Okay. But, a yeah? saint just but for example, uh, um, Abraham, or Abraham, yeah? he was seen as a prophet, right? But Abraham didn't live a very pure life. Like at some points, he got scared of death and he said to his wife, who's his half-sister, to say I'm your brother rather than admit that I'm your husband. And then she went in, got taken by the king, etc. So that's unethical behavior as far as we're concerned. So a saint is somebody who actually inside has, the inside has changed. They're not just a mouthpiece. From inside, they've become attuned to God. And even if death faces them, certain death, they'll accept that rather than leave God. But saints can have incorrect theological beliefs. Of course, okay. saints can be wrong, yeah. Okay. So if you didn't know about reincarnation, but the thing is, knowing about reincarnation doesn't really affect whether you uh, affect you in, in, in a normal sense. It's like not knowing about gravity um, and the power of gravity, sure. but still living your life. So, so let me let me push back a bit then. Um, so Jesus, good guy, say maybe not prophet or something. He may have got some theology wrong. But the Gurus, they did get their, their theology wrong. right. Yeah. Um, how do you know their theology is right? Their teaching is right. And Jesus wasn't. Because they're both good. Hmm. You're saying the teaching of one is better than the other. So how do you assess Jesus, the value? Jesus came first. He did. Well, we can look at that from a couple of points of view. So, for example, Jesus isn't talking about uh, reincarnation. Right, right. But, 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 you're, but you're, the guru you're is taking reincarnation the, because you believe that the Sikh, the Sikh, the Sikh people, the Sikh gurus correct. Well, are correct because they're good, and we're agreeing that Jesus was good as well. So we're saying not? both are good. We agree Jesus is good. One says doesn't. But you're saying, well, actually, I'm taking reincarnation to be a priori, and I'm saying, well, look. No, no, I'm both. not taking it a priori. Okay. I'm what taking it based good? upon a the guru's teachings, right, but there are other also my own brain, things. also my own brain and logic, and also all the saints. You so see, in India, by the way, in India, a lot of people, a lot of people in India believe in reincarnation. Okay. Lot, even if they don't believe in Guru. It's a common belief in India. Okay. The other thing is, a lot of people in India have actually remembered their past lives. Right. And many saints, many saints have been able to access their past lives as well. Okay. And they've been able to tell that, so confirm. So I'm not just taking it from the gurus, I'm taking it from all the people that have actually experienced their past lives. So, in all my time of being a Sikh, so the guys should, should, should make the point. In all my time of being a Sikh, okay, everything that I've learned since 16 years has further strengthened my belief that the gurus are speaking the truth. Maybe you've got confirmation bias though. Yeah, it's true, it could be. But the thing is, is I'm not saying that I haven't got bias for what the gurus have said. I'm not pretending to be an independent individual. I am saying I'm sold on the gurus from 16 so years ago. Honestly, seeking the truth. Well, I, I honestly was seeking the truth 16 years ago until I found it, and then yeah, now I found the, the truth. <laughs> I'm no longer honestly that's, seeking. That's religion for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sold. No, no. no, I'm not pretending to be otherwise. I'm not saying to you that you know I'm still seeking the truth. I found, I found, you know, I found the gurus. Science is the, science is the only thing that actually puts its hands up and says if things change, I'll change. So wow. if, if, if the, if the Result well, a lot of scientists change, don't. Change a lot of scientists become arrogant and say, "No, you're wrong," they do. And, and they hold on to their belief. They, they go. They, yeah. they get, they get but the funny thing about the gurus, they, they haven't gone in it. They're still here because right. nothing's really contradicted them so far. That sort of tells me nothing's really con. But the thing is, you I'm haven't yet. About, I'm not worried about contradiction. It's irrelevant. This, this argument, this argument. The reason why it's a bit irrelevant because you haven't come up with anything which goes which goes against the Sikh teachings okay. for me to feel that the gurus are wrong. Right. Okay, well, let's go again. So. So give me something that I can work with let's, that will let us at least get to it because we're just having a, 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 a the theoretical argument. So God creates the earth through making a sound, right? Yeah. I don't know what the exact word is. 
in the book, but it makes a sound, right? Sound is part of it. I wouldn't say like, you know... Where's that sound, where's that, where's that sound being propagated through? Because well, sound so, pressure works. Okay, but the, the gurus say about that, you can never understand that moment. So, so it's that, beyond our so understanding. If you say that, then yeah. obviously you're asking me for a serious debate about a point of Sikh theology. I'm giving you one, you're saying... Oh, but a Sikh theology... So if it's ineffable, then, okay, well, why ask the me Sikh for it? You just tricked me. No, no, I haven't tricked you at all. I've just said, give me a point that's real that I can work with. I did. You're giving me a point that the scripture says don't argue about. It's irrelevant. So which bits are, what can I choose from? What, what aren't at? What are ethics? What, what's, what's worth arguing about? Okay, talk to me about ethics. And, and fire. Talk to me about ethics. So talk to me about points of like, you know. Ethics isn't this. Or oh, philosophy, well, as opposed to... Of course to you're going to pick the things that I can't actually falsify. Let's talk about something like... Why, 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 like, why can't you falsify? Islamic Christianity, to some extent, are historical. You know, Christians say Jesus died and rose again. We find his body in the tomb still. Christianity is false. So that's what I'm kind of thinking of Sikhism is maybe it's just... Less no, 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 look, look. That, that, yeah. that, that, let's just take that, that point for a second. You said if you find right. Christ's body, Christianity is wrong. That's not fair. That's, that's, what, that's, that's not a fair Paul argument. The reason why it's not a fair Christ argument. Christ from the dead. Our faith is vain. It's no, no, no. Let us no, eat and drink no. We die. Because you see, Christ rising from the dead didn't happen when he was alive, logically. Actually. And yet people were still Christians then. Mm. So, so those Christians that were Christians before. They were. Christ, oh, 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 let me let me finish my point because it's a bit unfair. While the Christians that were Christians whilst he was alive yeah. and he hadn't yet risen from the dead, they were still Christians. And had they died whilst he, he was still alive and they died, they'd still be Christians. So it's, it's not right to say that him having risen from the dead is what makes Christianity true. It was true whilst he was alive. So I would disagree. So uh, people who followed Christ while he was alive, yes, they were in a sense Christians. But while he was alive, Christ said he's going to die, rise again, he's going to die for people's sins, etc. Once Based on what? Sorry? Where do you get that from? Oh, I mean, I'm basing all of this on the gospel accounts, um, my understanding of the historical Jesus. So, so therefore, we could uh, disagree, but, we but maybe he could be talking about reincarnation. The person didn't understand it, and he said, I'm going to die and I will rise again, just like all of you will rise again. Yeah, so, so the thing is, is the interpretation is a problem, isn't it? Because Christ, his preaching career was shorter than mine. I'll be going for four years. Christ was only down for three years. People could have misunderstood what you were trying to say. And plus, he never wrote it himself. That's the other problem, isn't it? That's fine. I think Jesus did say that he would rise after three days. That would kind of combat maybe the idea. And, and when he rose, he rose in the same kind of body in which he went. So that would challenge the sort of motion of reincarnation. That do. The thing is, is like Christianity for me, yeah. it's really hard for me to talk about Christianity, but it's easy for me to talk about Christ. The reason being is that Christianity for me is all, it's hard for me to decipher what is actually what Christ said and did. Right? It's very hard because of things like he didn't write the Bible itself, because of the fact that people wrote it, you know, who were grandchildren of the apostles and things like this. And I don't know. I thought they were grand. But anyway, the point. When do you think they're written? Well, from my reading, and I'm not claiming to be an expert on Christianity, from my understanding, that a lot of the gospels that were written of those people that were the apostles or the, or the people that were close to Jesus, they came sort of as uh, the grandchildren of the grandchildren. So we're talking maybe 200 years old. No, so almost, okay. almost no scholar would say that. Um, almost all scholars would say Mark 60s, maybe 70s, Matthew yeah. and Luke 70s, 80s, John 90s, maybe early. Named after the disciples, not written by them. Version, version of, not. Say that, that's true. Version, that's versions of, though. That's not the version the, that we definitely So, so anyway, the, the point the, being. I like to go, I like to, with Christianity, I like to go by what Christ had said. Some of the things we know, we can probably guess that he probably said. I mean, it's like the Lord's Prayer, for example, the Lord's Prayer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that seems something that he himself said because it's quite, it's quite consistent across all divisions. So that philosophy there, I can agree with, you know. Our Father, who art in heaven. Now, interesting there, he doesn't say my Father, it's our Father. Right, because of the fact that it's, it's we're all children of God. Right, hold on. Let me just give you my interpretation. Sir? Okay, go on. Um, but Jesus also speaks of having a unique relationship with the Father. So in Matthew and in Luke, for example, not even starting on John's Gospel, you have no one knows the Father except the Son. No one knows the Son except the Father. No Sorry, no one? No one knows the Father except the Son. No one knows the Son except the Father. Son, no the son except the uh, what's, the, what's the meaning no of the word the Son? That's the problem. The Son reveals him, right? Yeah. So the, the question here is, what is the Son of God? Uh, in the Scriptures. Is it only Jesus? Because it, it, the word Son of God can, has been used in uh, 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 in, in many different uh, uh, ways. It could be a king in the Old Testament, for example. It could even be, it could even be yeah. our interpretation, which is a saint. A saint is like, like God. 
Somebody who's enlightened has become like the light God has gone into them and they are now shining with the same light. I mean, I, then they, now you can take that interpretation and say, no one knows uh, the God except for those saints and the saints know God. And that's what we believe in. So I mean, text can be interpreted in many different ways. Exactly. So this is why I say, Sorry, just, just okay, go on. I, I try to, I try to, uh, and you've been very respectful. Um, text can be interpreted in many ways. As a Protestant and as a modern interpreter, I do prefer what they call the grammatical historical method. So try to I don't even know what that means, but I'll so take so you try to interpret it fairly literally in the way you would interpret any text, okay. basically using the rules of grammar and so on. Uh, also understanding it in the way a first century author would understand it. So okay. I would say, for example, a first century Jew, reading the beginning of Mark's Gospel where it quotes Isaiah 43 and applies that to Jesus, yeah. which is about how one a messenger will come prepare the way for the Lord, yeah. and John the Baptist comes and prepares the way for Jesus. I think a first century Jewish author would say, this author is making a very exalted claim that Jesus is the Lord. So I would say context and the grammatical historical method favour my interpretation. Okay. All right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Do you believe uh, in the statement that many Christians make that um, when Jesus says that uh, no one will find God except through me. Uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, yes, I do believe. You believe in that. So, like someone like myself, would you say that, that because I, I don't believe in Jesus in that way, I see him as a saint, but I believe in my gurus, that, that means that I'm going to then not going to find God? So, that, so, I believe that for those who have heard the message of Jesus, okay. uh, only those who accept that message will be able to have a true relationship with God. For those in far off countries who have never heard the gospel... Um, the anonymous uh, Christian God. idea. Yeah, I'm open to that. I've got to be honest, I'm very hesitant about See, that. See, but here's a question, oh, here's a question, right? You've got somebody like the Gurus who's talking remarkably similar things to Jesus about God. Only some similar yeah. things, many things. And, uh, not Muslims, that's Sikhs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I the idea of love, forgiveness, the idea of um, the, the, your, your, the, the Father is in me like I'm in the Father, you know, same thing. Yeah. So, so, anyway, the point is, a lot of similarities. Okay, but as far as you're concerned, regardless of the similarity, sorry, your head's uh, in the way. The are more important. The, the, uh, but as far as you're concerned, that it doesn't make a difference because I'm going to go to hell. Um, you, are you comfortable with that idea? Because it, for me, it seems that that exclusivity of Christianity is one of the biggest problems I have with it. I mean, that's a very good question. I'm very inclusive, like the gurus are telling us, be inclusive minded. Sure. Whereas exclusivity is very much part of what you're talking yes, about. Yes, it is. Um, I'd say the first bit about the similarity of teaching, I would say, in a sense, that's, that's irrelevant uh, to the question of salvation. So, so, you know, knowing good moral teaching won't save you. As a Christian, I firmly believe that. Right. I believe to some it's grace, yeah? It's, it's grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. It's, I'd say we have a very similar concept. Okay, that would be interesting. It's only God, Guru's grace that will save you, not just moral well, action. We can talk more about that later. Um, but I would say, to some extent, it's not lack of knowing the gospel that doesn't save you. We are all not saved naturally by our sin. So when we, when we, well, when God condemns us to hell, work, and right? I have a slightly unusual view of hell, that's another discussion. Um, I, I, but okay, sure. fair enough. So the only way to get saved is by Sorry, grace, and Jesus is the only person that can do that. Grace. But you ask a question, my friend. Why are you giving a lecture? <laughs> I'm, I said five seconds. Ask you a question. Oh, go on, go on. Let, 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 me, let me finish. Okay. Go on, go on, go on. I'm just saying um, that when it comes to, to people camera, being condemned to hell, yeah, it will be this is because of your sins, yeah, not because you rejected the gospel. That's my understanding. Okay. Question. But here's a question Why is Jesus the only person that can do grace? The reason why Jesus is the only person who can do grace, you have to go through Jesus, is because Jesus is the unique God man, God come to earth in a human being. He is the only one who's able to die for sins. Very old idea. Yeah. No, no, fair enough, it's his, it's his truth. We'll talk more about that in a minute, sorry. But do you, do you feel that some of the exclusivity... Again, by okay, the way, so because he's the God-man, he's the only one who can die for sins, you're sin there has to be a atonement for sins to be forgiven, that's why you have to have Jesus. Back. Okay, here's a question. Why do you think that atonement must happen for sins to be forgiven? Okay, look, we have a video about this on our channel. Why atonement? Okay, so the idea of atonement comes from things like blood sacrifice, something must yeah. be sacrificed. There's like a scale and that you must, there, there are two levels of the scale and you must have that part to balance it out. So my view at the moment is that many Christians have the view that Christ's crucifixion was the atonement for everybody else's sins. But the thing that doesn't make any sense to me in that view is that Jesus was forgiving sins while he was alive. People coming up to him and saying, I've sinned and he would say, I've forgiven you. So, so how come, for free, so how come he was able to forgive them while he was alive, but later on he had to die for everybody else's sins? Because we have the view 
that the Guru can forgive sins and the Guru can, uh, can give you grace. But he doesn't have to die. The Guru did die. The fifth Guru was tortured and he was uh, sacrificed. The ninth Guru died as well. So we had two uh, Gurus that were martyred out of ten, right? And still, we don't... The Shia, they're winning. Sorry? It's less than the Shia, they're yeah. winning. However, we still don't believe that the Guru's death was a thing that gives us atonement. We believe the Guru's grace can do that. So we don't ask for anything apart from the Guru's grace. So if Christ could forgive sins before, while he was alive, why did he then have to die to forgive sins? Yeah. That's a very good question. I'm happy to answer. Sorry, but you want to say something? No. Okay, I'll carry on. I mean, um, in terms of why, well, sorry, why does he have you to like my argument? Yeah. No, I mean, it's just the same old thing. It's well, you hear everyone. Yeah, it's just two people you're, arguing you're, you're about which. Muslims, well, it's just a question. I never understood. Which imaginary friend there. Oh, well, that's your normal com uh, People yeah. comment that all day long, so. I know, it's so you're not very it's original it's, either. It's like, it's like listening well, to people ask decide which. But side, have you been asked that question before? Yeah, Muslims ask that a lot. So I would say that. Same question. Yeah, but why did he have to die? Yeah. Any sin that, that is forgiven in the Bible, including pre the crucifixion of Christ, can only be forgiven in light of the ultimate um, sacrifice or atonement. Oh, made. that's how you got out of it. This is the idea you get in Hebrews and New Testament. So you forgive it, but it was only going to happen because later on he was going to sacrifice himself. What? So where are you getting objective morality from? Where are you getting? But if that person died, if that person died whilst they were alive, whilst so Christ is alive, somebody gets forgiven, they then die. Yeah, they're forgiven. So they're forgiven, but then they have, they have to wait until Christ dies and then they can get that forgiveness no, or is it, is it a valid at the beginning? So I mean, in term, if we're talking about the chronology of God and the sacrifice of Christ, the, the New Testament says that Jesus is the Lamb. But, but don't... No, 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 okay, no. sorry, go on. Sorry. He is a sacrificial Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. Okay. So when we talk about the sacrifice of Christ, arguably there's an element of timelessness here. But I would say that the idea that a sacrifice has to be made is there in the Old Testament with the Jewish, the Israelite sacrificial system, which we would say is a shadow, this typology pointing forward to okay. the sacrifice that Okay. But, you know, like, we're living in, the, in this world now, yeah. right? Don't you feel sometimes that a lot of Christians don't go towards Christianity because of this one point, that it's an exclusive type faith. They don't feel, when they see their friends, they it's see their... The it, see, it's, it goes against a lot of logic. Right. Yeah. So, to answer the question from your point of view, is the exclusivity essential to Christianity or is it possible that it could have been misunderstood and the exclusivity is not as important as the message? I, I think, so I, mean, I would say Christian, as a Protestant, I would say Christianity is founded upon our sacred scriptures, the Bible. I think the Bible is very clear, only Jesus, uh, the God-man can atone for your sins. He's the only way to God. So I, I think it is fundamental to Christianity. Okay, that's your view. Inclusivity. Are there Christians that take an inclusive view of Christianity? Yes, and I would say they do so by abandoning the Bible. Okay. And if they, if they want but, to do that, fine. I'd say that's not. The but do you believe that the, the Bible then was preserved by God's, uh, the Holy Ghost, keeping it going as it um, was meant? To. I would say it has been accurately preserved throughout history. I'd accurately. Say historically. Okay. In terms of whether God providentially made that bus, yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, historically, a, a good example is Bart Ehrman. Uh, who? Bart Ehrman is a very. Wait, who said that slowly? Bart Ehrman. Okay. The, the Muslim <laughs> I just said Bart Ehrman. <laughs> I was like the guy called Ehrman. He's a very well respected New Testament textual critic. Yeah. He's also known to be very sceptical of the Bible, but even he will say the Bible as we have it is the same as when it was Stand still. written. <laughs> okay, sorry, so describe. Fair enough, that's your view. I, I think, I, okay, I still think in my view that Christianity has got a lot of good in it, Christ's mess has a lot of good in it, and that Christ could forgive sins because he did so while he was alive, and that Christ could endure without the exclusivity in Christianity. Sikhism is somewhat you see what I mean? exclusive, right? Well, it's not, not well, somewhat, very little bit, yeah. but we do but believe that good... You wouldn't accept people who, for example, believe that men were superior to women. I mean, I would no, well, when you say them. accept them, okay. in which way would you mean accept so them? If someone had a religious belief that men, that they believe that one race was preferential to another race, right. you wouldn't accept that religion, would you? We wouldn't agree with that uh, person, but then if that person's walking around harming nobody, just, you know, you doodly do, walk around against saying, against I'm actually quite racist. You wouldn't accept they can go on about their life. About their spiritual beliefs, though. You wouldn't expect their spiritual beliefs as a representation of the one. But I would re respect or accept? Accept. Well, we'd accept, uh, it's hard to, the word accept is a bit broad because we you would not believe that it was a No, I wouldn't believe, I wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe that it was a legitimate But accepting person. someone doesn't involve believing right, in them. Forget the word accept. Isn't it? You know what I'm trying to get at. Like, I can accept what he's you're, saying you're playing, without believing in him. You're playing with words, right? So you're saying... Fair enough, but those are important you words. Accept, you should accept, you should, you're saying you should not be exclusive, right? Yeah. We're also agreeing that Sikhism doesn't accept as legitimate, as a legitimate presentation 
of the god of Sikhism, uh, a religion that was racist or sexist. Yeah, we can't accept racism or sexism. No. I mean, if you're interested, like, if you're talking about not being exclusive, well, not you're talking, the the second, fire, you're talking about 90 to yeah. 95 percent of humanity. Yeah, fair enough. Like, but here's the thing. He's probably doing like 99. You're here's the like thing, right? So we are arguing about four. Percent. Look, Let me just finish. Okay. You're talking about four like percent <laughs> of the population. Whereas, that's, whereas you're, when you're agnostic, you're atheist. Actually, you can accept people. Okay. You all right. You don't have to make comments on people. So you're not actually as exclusive as you're making yourself. Okay. As okay. Exclusive as you're making yourself. No, no. All right. Uh, let me let me respond then, if you if you might. Um, we're not wa walking, talking Bibles or Qurans or Guru Granth Sahibjis. Everybody's an individual trying their best to listen to the scripture. So there's not one religion or, or there's five religions. There's actually six billion religions in a way. Seven billion, sorry, because seven billion people and everybody's trying to make their own way in the world, right? So you don't judge 1.6 billion people because of what the Quran says. So if the Quran happens to say something which I don't agree with, it isn't, it's not me to go up to a normal Muslim and say, I can't accept you, brother, not, because you believe in the Quran. I can work with that person problem. without a problem. That's not the critique you're making of Christianity. You're but we are inclusive. We accept God people. Because Fine. every That's individual like, person... Christians are, Christians are, one second. Christians are exclusive, inclusive in that sense. Many of my good friends are Christians. And they are inclusive in the sense that yeah. they accept people. They would feed and clothe them and look after them. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually one of the messages of Christianity is that you can still look after them. Love thy neighbor. Even, even like, if, yeah. Love, yeah. Like, love thy enemy, sorry. That's fine. Every, Christians and Sikhs are on the same footing on that. The, the different point you're making is that, is that Sikhism is different to Christianity. Sikhism accepts other people's religious views as a representation, as a legitimate interpretation of the one. Okay, let me clarify that then. What we accept is that people of different faiths can reach the Creator, right? can reach God, but the way that they must follow in order to become a saint is very similar across the lines. We call that the path of the saints. And that, so, so there is a difference because you're right, I want to make that clear because there's something called the path of the saints which doesn't belong to any religion. It belongs to the saints. And it involves sh uh, trying to fight your lust, anger, pride, greed, attachment and embracing truth, contentment, um, uh, uh, truth, contentment, compassion, justice and forgiveness. So you're right in the sense that we will not accept that someone can become a saint if they're full of lust and anger. Fine. But we could accept someone can become a saint if they can, if they can display the characteristics of the saintly path regardless of the, if their label is a Sikh or a Muslim or a Hindu. I'm totally on board with that. You're talking about 20 or 30 people. I'm trying to draw out the 25 billion people that have lived in the history of humanity. Okay. I'm saying the majority of them held views that are not compatible with Sikhism. And you're saying that those people... I don't agree with you. Okay, well they were racist. Most people up until basically the 1950s, and even now, most people were horrendously racist, and horrendously sexist, in a way that I'm guessing... That's, that's overgeneralization. The reason why, it's not, even it's not if my religion says that people are not equal, people within that religion have said, yeah, but I still think they're equal. People are not walking, talking Qurans and Bibles and things, what I said earlier. No matter what the faith says, people still have different views. Historic. And I think it's unfair to say that every Christian... The of people on the ground, regardless of their religion, is that they were, whether it's a spiritual belief or a political belief, they are massively intolerant up until, as I said, up until about the 1980s, actually. If I'm being yeah, honest. agreed. But, but the world might be coming closer to a Sikh faith, and I agree with that. But yeah, it seems to be, because we... we, we, we but, you're you're but, making this sort of holier-than-thou claim of, of massive inclusivity, but actually you're arguing over such a fraction of people... Because but there's only ever going to be a fraction. That's the reality of what the gurus talk about. The gurus inclusive. talk about... Not actually inclusive. Well, from a religious angle, we are. No, because not. we're not claiming. Not. Not no, no, compared to what uh, our Christian friend is saying here, we are. Because what his view is, regardless of how good and moral and spiritual I am, until I believe in Jesus, I, the gates of heaven are closed to me. Right, Which is our view is, that's not the case. That even if you don't believe in the gurus, but you're spiritual, you're moral, you're holy, you give up your ego, the doors are open to you. So, and the, the, in, any, in any case, in reality, across the world, only maybe less than 1% people will ever get the level of enlightenment that we're talking about. Right, so, you're, so in real terms, you agree with me then, in real terms, de facto, you're just as exclusive as Christians. No, what are you on about? The only, the only inclusivity, the only, the only form, no, the standard is so high, but the standard is set by God, so you might say God is exclusive. I agree. Blame us for it, it's just, yes. the way is hard. Exactly, it's exactly the way is hard. Okay, Thank you fine. saying it. All right. You're saying, you're, you're saying the way to God is hard, so therefore for a of rice and God is wrong. Next to you. Yeah, the God, you're saying God is wrong because the way to God is really hard. I'm saying that both your gods, I don't like either. They both seem like pretty nasty, petty people. Well, why is it nasty to demand someone should be moral? That's the opposite of nasty. 
I'm saying what gives you the but right? You can't to say to me that I don't right? like, just because I don't like people who are mean and terrible, you're going to call me nasty. No, no, we're not talking about... That makes no sense. No, sorry. If I only like people that are friendly and... and no, no, if take the point. We take the point firstly. If I only like people yeah. that are nice, that can't make me nasty. Right. So we're talking about... So that's not so fair. What type of nice are we talking about? Are we talking about the type of nice where you don't murder people? In which case I would agree with you, but the majority of people historically weren't murdered. Some people I'm talking do need a good you're murdering. Saying, you're, you're <laughs> I'm talking about the ISIS type. Okay. They do need to be murdered. All right, I wouldn't agree with that. There's, there's, really there, there, that there's some people that about. need to be killed because they're terrible people. Right, okay, capital punishment. So no, no, we never extra, had capital punishment. I think punishment. Tyrants and people that are terrible, okay. they need to be gotten rid of this. The, the biggest re the gurus were armed, right? I'm not saying that the gurus didn't fight. The gurus fought in battles, the gurus were armed. The gurus took part in what we call Tarim Yud, which is a righteous war, for a bond of a better word. But it's not based on religion. So we had Muslims on our side fighting against the Mughal Empire, which was a tyrannical regime. And Muslims themselves agreed that this is not an Islamic regime and it should be wiped out. So we've had a uh, righteous war, but it's not a religious war. Fine, let, let's put that aside. So, so let's, say, let's say we can agree that this God probably wouldn't like murderers and rapists okay. and child molesters. Agreed. Right? Right. Actually quite a small fraction of the population. Yep. This, both of your gods, you, know, you were talking about like sexual abstinence. You were talking about... I didn't say sexual abstinence. I'm pretty sure... No, no, I'm married, I've got sorry, kids. Lust, sorry, lust woman. Lust woman. Lust yeah, so ex ex excess lust. Ex so within marriage, so we've got, within we've marriage got, is fine. We've now got a god who doesn't like people having sex with their girlfriends. I mean, that's not... I mean, I, I'm, happy, I'm friends with people who have sex with their girlfriends and boyfriends. I'm happily friends with them. I've okay. got no moral objection to being friends with them. Okay. I suggest you shouldn't either. All right, I don't have a problem with people that have sex with Your their girl, girlfriends, right? The, the reason that God says that it's hard for you to go through that way with lust is basically like saying that, you know, the human body is bad because the human body doesn't let you get fit and a six pack because you like eating donuts. Yeah, you're doing it to yourself. The, the lust, yeah, yeah, let me explain it to you because the spiritual path involves controlling your lower desires and embracing your higher desires of meditation and love. When you're involved in lust, you can't. So let's say, say someone is sitting there and they're having deep loving relationship with their wife, but they haven't married her. Okay, let's just see that. But on the other end of the spectrum is somebody who is addicted to pornography. Who's a lech? No, 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 it's the end of the end. No, it's not the alternative. I didn't say that. No, that's putting words in my mouth. Sorry, what's your name, by the way? Because we should. What, what's your, what, do you mind me knowing your name? Okay. Is it relevant? No, no. Okay, it's irrelevant in a way, but it's just polite to talk that way. However, I said the other end of the spectrum. I didn't say the alternative. Just want to clarify that. The other end of the spectrum, okay, which means there's many people in between, okay. You've got hardcore pornography uh, per, on, on this side, and you've got uh, somebody who's having a loving relationship with their girlfriend or wife. They're, vi they're very different. They're very different. Because this can be a monogamous loving relationship, which isn't all about lust, and this person's all about lust. So the guru is saying, it's about avoiding lust. Right, but we're talking about, you're, you're saying, you know, we should be exclusive to people who are immoral. That was kind of the point you were making. It's no, no, okay no, no, no. Exclusive. God, at least God, sorry, but God is exclusive against people who are immoral, right? Yeah, Immor immorality. Define moral in a way that basically includes 90 to 95% of the British population no. who have had sex outside of wedlock. It's such a, it's such a cutting, it, you, you so I think that's again a generalization. So many, no, no. Oh, come on. But they can you, still, I had, I, look, 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 I was a normal 21 year old. You know, I was, uh, I had girlfriends before I became a Sikh. I'm not, he's not exclusive to me. Yeah, I just changed my ways. Right. But so anybody, it's not, no, but that's not fair. Anybody can change their ways. Fine, but your message of inclusivity. The majority, of, but the majority of people you, okay. Inclusive. Finish your point. Majority of the people you're talking about. No, no, I was. The majority of the people you're talking about on the ground, the reality on the ground you're talking about, which I was this thing. Okay, those 95% you're talking about, those 95% are doing that and don't really believe in God anyway. Right, so then we're talking about people that could learn and change their ways and therefore it is open to them. Why does God, it is not, it might be open to them. Why are you about Christianity? You could, of course, I'm not saying against Christianity. I agree, this is how, this is, they're actually way more No, 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 because there is a big difference. Because the difference is that once they're dead, you're saying it's no longer open to them. We're saying it is still open to them. It is open to them because it depends on their actions and their morals and their life regardless of the belief in Christ. That's fine, but that is a different point to what you were making, which is that in this life people will change. On well, that is the same, but you're right, there's another yeah, yeah. chance. Yeah, yeah. So, what I'm trying to say is that majority of people are, are either atheistic or 
uncaring in the sense that it's not relevant to them whether they believe in God or not. They don't even examine the fact that they believe in God or not. But that still doesn't mean that those few people that are the saints, regardless of all faiths, are excluded from God depending upon you know their, their, just their beliefs or whatever, like their um, religious label. So we talked about atheistic people. Why are they excluded? Why are they not? You can't say, why does God exclude, a, exclude atheists? I'm asking you, why, why because because the gates, because I said to you earlier, there's two wings to this Sikh, yeah? the, the spiritual, the life that we should be living as human beings. The Sikh view that there's two main wings of, of a person, right? That get us there. One wing is spirituality and the other wing is morality. Well, asking, why, and spirituality why, comes why, from God. Why is that the case? Why has God created that exclusive paradigm in which you must believe in him and follow his rules? Actually, a truly loving person would ask without, without asking for anything in return. They would give without receiving. Really? Would, that's, that's, that's true compassion. Okay. When I read about people who I think, God, that is the... My, my people who are truly loving, right. they don't ask to be recognised. Okay. Because it's good and the right thing but to do. But we have the same concept when it comes to helping people. We feed people in our Gurdwaras without any requirements. God wants to be known. God wants to be worshipped. He wants you to follow his No, no, no. That's not true. When you say God wants, you've created duality. That you and God are separate. But at a core level, for the Sikhs, we believe that we are the same. We're not playing with words because all of us collectively chose this. We're part of the one. However you want to phrase We chose it. When you say God did it to me, you can say you did it to yourself. What language would you like me to use to talk about God? So I don't the one. The one has made up, or some rules were around that the God knew about. In agreement God with you. About, in agreement with me, without my knowing, by the way. But you, I, I without without your remembering. Without, without your remembering. Well, that's, that's the same. No. <laughs> I didn't, he didn't get my consent. He did at that time. Okay. I, didn't get, I don't remember giving my consent. It's not consent. Okay, I was too drunk. <laughs> you he, just he forgot. Got, he, made up these, he made up these rules, and now he's expecting me to live by them. Right? Yeah. And not only I've got to know him, right? You know I mean? If someone really loved me, yeah. they wouldn't ask me to do those things. They would love me unconditionally. Right. Unconditional love. Yeah, but the thing is, is imagine an atheist, right? Let's just I can think let, of let, let me take let me take the uh, the reductum uh, reductum ad absurdum, right? So you've got an atheist, right? Who wakes up in heaven, yeah, yeah because a good person, and now he's in front of God, yeah. right? Now he's in front of God. Now the atheist is like, I didn't ask for this. How dare you bring me to heaven? I don't believe in you. I didn't ask to come to heaven. You've got no right to bring me here no, I'm saying, when I don't believe in you. I'm saying a truly, a truly loving God, a truly good God, or a truly right. good one, yeah. I mean, in accordance to these rules, yeah. would, would take that... Oh yeah, I love that. That's, I'm and thirsty. Not, I forgot it was there. A truly good person wouldn't say, let's, let's take God out of the equation, wouldn't say, um, have you done... You know, they're asking, can you, I don't know, can you, uh, let's think of a thing. Think uh, of you, only good people can come into my party, right? Yeah. They wouldn't say, they would say, what have you done for charity, right? And the person would say, oh, I've done this for charity, for that yeah, charity, yeah. for the people out. Yeah. The really good person letting them into that party wouldn't say, and do you know my name? Do you know who I am? Because I'm pretty important, pretty good person. Did you know me 10 minutes ago? Oh, you didn't know me? Okay, sorry, you can't come in. Okay. They would just ask them on their goodness, on their attributes. But, but the thing is, I know, but the thing is the lens you're coming from is the one life lens. When you've got multiple lives taken into account, no, 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 you gotta wait. You gotta wait and let me explain my point. When you've got multiple lives, when you've been good to a certain extent, but you haven't found God, what God does then, sends you back into this world with a chance then to be born into a religious family which meditates and then hopefully you can experience the joy of God's meditation. And then this time, when you come into that, you're fully armed. So you do get rewarded for everything you do good, but, you, but the thing with the party is, it's, big to, it's very hard to cope with that party. Yeah? There's a lot of power and energy in there. And if you don't want to know that person, you don't like that person, it's going to be hard to cope. What if you just didn't know them before you got there? Yeah, but the thing is, is what God does is to prepare you for that. It's to get you to know them before. Huh? Why do they care? Because you've got it, many lives. Why is it important? But you've got many lives. It has nothing to do with it. Why does this person have a desire yeah. that I know who they are? Why because, are okay. like some Good question. All right. I have to sort of say, yeah, All I know right. who you are. You okay. Do thing does, does, your mom, does your mother like hearing from you? I'm not, I don't want to be rude at this point. but yeah, it's just, does. Okay. Why does she care if you call her or not? Oh, well, she's a human being. She's got an emotional connection. Yeah, and God loves us as well. Okay. But my mum... That's if, why God cares. If I stop... If I... If I I had a brain injury and I stopped recognizing my mum, I had dementia, I had a coma. She would try and my make you remember. Would keep loving me. Yeah. 
Like, but, God, but interestingly, no, it wouldn't. It would. No, it wouldn't. No, know that's God not true. No, that's not true. God's never going to abandon you. No, God's never. No, no, no. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's your view based upon some other faith, not my faith. It is based on your. No, it's not based. You must have spiritual until. Yeah, God's going to be with you anyway. All God will do is make you come back in another life where you can try and find God. Here's the thing with your mother. No, going back to the point about your mother, because that's a human person we can talk about. Why would you, if your mother was there, listen, if your mother was there and you're on a life support machine and you're in a coma and you can't remember her, and yet every day she tries to remind you who she is and talk about you, if someone walked in, like you, says, oh, why does she care if he remembers her? She should just love him and never tell him anything about who he was and how much love they had. No, no, no. no. It's a very good point and you don't want to answer it. I want you to ask a question. So if somebody walked in like you, a bit upset and angry, saying, what's up with your mother? Why does she de desire for you to remember her? Because the thing you're, you're forgetting here is that you were once one with God. So no, 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 no. Answer, answer the question. You were once one with God, you've been separated and this is about remembering. So why is it fair for you to say that God is, demand, is asking for you to remember and reconnect? The difference is, is that in that, in that case, I would expect God to want to connect. That's perfectly legit. That's the problem with God wanting to be known. Yeah. The problem I've got is that it's a condition. It's an, it's an unequivocal, immovable condition. It's just like, it's like, it's like my mum there. You know, I'm in a coma, I've, or I've had some brain loss, I forgot who my mum is. In this version, this version where God is like my mother, where she plays that part, you say, well, you don't know me, I'm not interested. Come again, try again, re be reincarnated, and you can come back in, you can try again. No. Whereas, whereas actually what would happen is that if your parents right. really loved you, okay. unconditionally, right. they would take a step back and they would say, well, th that person doesn't remember me, but I'm still going to try and help them. I'm still going to pay their bills. Right. I'm still going to pay for their hospital care. Yeah. That's unconditional love. That's what's love. happening. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what for. God is doing. It's not what it he's is. doing. It is. Because you're still not. here, aren't you? Even though you don't believe in God, God hasn't struck you down with a lightning, has he? But that's because God doesn't exist. But, no, no. That's, that's academic. Fair, not fair enough, but in my view, God does exist. And God hasn't struck you down for not believing. God. God's Fine. still waiting for you to turn. No, Even if you don't do it in this life, do in the next life, the in the to... next life, God is still caring for you right now. We're trying to assess the, the energy inside you right now is from God. So it's not fair for you to say that point because from our perspective, you're right now being cared for by God. Just like I'm being cared for by God. As you and know, I was cared, and I'll give you one example from my own uh, history. Once I had this experience where I experienced God and I watched God watching me in my life. And I saw all the times where I didn't know God, but God was looking out for me. And I felt grateful. So you're having, you don't know, but the day that you realize, I know. the day that you realize, I know. All you'll be religious grateful. people tell me this. One you'll day you'll get it, one day you'll get it. Great, fine. Well, the but point one I'm life you'll get it. Point I'm Anybody trying said to make, that to you before? The point I'm trying to make is that Richard, <laughs> one life you get it. you were criticizing Christianity on the basis that it was exclusive. You yeah. didn't like its exclusivity. But what we've established is that Sikhism is just no, as exclusive. we haven't established that. We have established that. We said it's religious. I think they've roundly shown you. religious exclusivity. It uh, is and he religious agreed with you. exclusivity. You made the same point you made atheist, earlier, and that guy agreed with me that he, atheists, there is a difference. Look, atheists aren't going to get Bring him back. Atheists Where aren't. Atheists aren't going to meet God, are they? Where is he? Bring him back. It's not going to happen. Atheists won't find God, agreed. Exactly. Right, but they can well, come back just and exclusive. try again. It's just as exclusive. They can come back and try again. It's not exclusive. They can come back and try again. Right, but he's never going to change. God's never going to let them in. Why? I don't know. You tell me. Why won't they change? Right, but that's the if point. There is a that's, God, that's exclusivity. You just hit the nail on the head. You just explained it. You just ex totally explained why Sikhism is just as exclusive no, no, as Christianity. No, no, because no, no. you said, no. why won't they change? I'm not changing. They should change. Every religion, it's every done. listen, every religion has that exclusivity you're talking about. Agreed. Okay. Yes. However, thank you. However, thank you. No, 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 no. There's still more. Not to there go. at the end. We, we, we've got to go more further. <laughs> However, Sikhism does not have. The kind of religious exclusivity which exists in many other faiths, right, it's marginal, which yeah. means it's just that it's people only of that faith can get into heaven. We have a more open. So you agree that we are more inclusive than in other faiths, but the, the exclusivity you're talking about is set by God, not by us. As I said, the, the deep, I said this before, 
on the de facto level, you are talking about such a small number of people who accidentally live by all the seat rules. You just, it, it's, it's, it's marginal. I, I agree, fine, yeah, you have, that, you have like a 0.1% advantage over Christianity. What I'm actually waiting for is an actually inclusive religion, an actually inclusive God, who isn't petty and jealous and vain. God doesn't hate you or is petty or jealous. You're still alive, aren't you? He's vain. The fact that you're alive right now, if there was a God, yeah. right, the fact that you're alive right now and living a healthy life in a safe environment is proof that God has done nothing petty against you. That's a bare minimum. So sure, prove to me, I, I would let, no, 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 prove to me, if That's God exists, if God exists, prove to me that God has been petty against you. He hasn't been petty. But you don't believe in God. And nor have you worshipped God. I'll, I'll respond to it. So, so he's been petty in the sense that he's not going to let me in to, his, to this kind of blissful world right. until I say, yes, yes, I know you, like he's some celebrity. Okay. The reality of it is, is that when I have, if I have a pet, right, I look after that pet no matter what. Because I brought that pet into my okay. house. And I, All right. and I, if my hamster knows me... No, you or, won't. One second. No, you won't. I do. If, if my that dog keeps coming in your house every day, being exactly I what you told I'm bringing the hamster Yeah, but if he keeps pooing on your carpet every day, at some point, you will say, get out. Oh, so I'm fed up with you. Forget the pooing on the carpet. I'm not pooing on God's No, no, no. You give me I'm just not knowing you, you are in So a I bring a snake. A snake but you're still alive. A snake doesn't... So I bring a snake into my house, right? A snake doesn't have a proper conception. If he's biting you, you get rid of it. No, I would not. I bring a snake into my house. Right? I want to see how, how loving you are. I want to test your limits. A snake doesn't have Tell a... me something that you, can, you would tolerate. Doesn't have... Let me just finish. A snake doesn't have a conception of what a human is. That, I'm, that I look after it, that I feed it, that I right. look Fair after enough. its face, right? I don't, I don't say get out of my house, just it. if it bit me, that would be different. One okay. second, if it okay. bit me, that would be different. But looking after it, as you said, caring for me, making sure I'm fed and water, that's a bad minimum. He brought me doing into that right world. now. Yeah, that's a bad minimum. He's doing that's, it for you now. That's a minimum standard. Okay, he's that. doing that for you I'm right. not going to be grateful for that. Fair enough, right? If you don't want to be, I am. If you bring someone in your house, if you bring a dog into your house, and then, you know, you don't give it food and water, but you keep it locked in, I mean, that's cruel. That's cruel. Yeah, but you're being given food and water, you're alive. Right, and I agree, that's bare minimum. Okay. That's like, that's, that's, go on. that's the lower level. Go on. The problem I've got is that you're just... On the Maslow, hi Maslow hierarchy, you're quite high up, aren't you? What, you mean I've fulfilled you, you my as, lower You needs. as an individual person, I would, you're, yeah, on the Maslow so. hierarchy, you've got both food, shelter, education... Um, education. Education, on the, I'm sure it's on there. But it, it, you're in the... In, in, me and you, not, I might make it personal to you, but me and you right now, we're in the top 5% of the world. Yeah. Fair enough. All of us living here, we're quite blessed. Not living in Aleppo right now, getting bombed out. We've got food, we've got water, we've got houses. And yet we're ungrateful. We're saying, God's going to be bad to me. And our God's petty. He's not bad to me, he's vain. Vain in which sense? In the sense your mother wants you to remember to, you. You have to know who he is. But your it's like mother... A, it's like going to a celebrity's no, no, no. house like and them saying, do you know who I okay. am? Do you know who I am? You say, I don't know who you are. So you can't come in there. You no, can't no. come in. It's what vanity. If, it's what if vanity. God every day tries Whilst you're in the hospital to remind you who you are, your mother tries every day to remind but you. He's not trying. Who you are. He can just write it in the sky. He's trying right now. Let him, let him write it in no, the no, no. sky right he's now. He's trying right now through me. You bugger off. Listen, <laughs> he's trying through me right now. No, he's not. He is. He's doing a pretty rubbish job of it. Well, if I'm not good enough, fair enough, that's my fault. I mean, but come on, you know, if you could just be a guy who's got confirmation bias. I'm talking about like split the heavens, fire in the sky. I told you, God, God is that, a seat. But God Let's is that magician that can't uh, let his hand be known. Until you well, turned him that, the right I mean, way. that's just cheating, right? Like, no, of course, if you, were, if you weren't real, that's Your how you said it Your faith would come from that miracle then. And then you would come up with some other. You know, if somebody was a real confirmation bias type atheist, even if the heavens opened up with a big saying, God is here, you know what they would say? I think the aliens could have done that. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Some atheists are so hardcore, even if there was a golden hand that came down from the sky, picked them out of the way of a bus that was going to hit them, they would still say, Oh, that could have happened. Some random miracle. Could be a ball of lightning. I could have misunderstood it. Well, I'd want someone else to see it too. Yeah. yeah. I probably Otherwise, it's just going to mean. Right. Probably and then, check and then, my and then you say maybe that person is trying to make me believe that. So if you want to have confirmation bias, the news you can go anywhere. No, you can't believe the news. <laughs> what are you on about? I won't believe the news. The news is crazy. So. The thing you've come, we've come across, I'm not trying to convince anybody, nor is God. The only way to God is to turn to God and call God. You haven't, you haven't, uh, but you have you tried? Met, haven't have you tried? Have you tried? You said you meditated. Well, I have, yes. Through I what? Have tried. Through I, what? I, you haven't you met. You, you haven't, you're asking me to answer your, your question, which I'm trying to do, very honestly. You still haven't met this idea that God is vain and he's arrogant. Well. Okay, I'll answer it then. Okay? I explained to you earlier, the mother would not be called arrogant and vain if she keeps trying to get you to remember her. But she would be called vain if she didn't let it go. If she said, right, 
I got nothing to do with you because you don't remember who I am. But God doesn't want nothing. To, it's not true that it's God exactly doesn't. Exactly what God it's, says. God has got everything. Can't come to into you. my house anymore. No. You don't know who I am. No, no, no. no. God, I'm important. That's person. not fair for you to say because I'm trying to explain <coughs> to you that God hasn't done that to you already. Anyway, he's not humble, is he? No, no. It's a, it's a irrelevant point. You're saying God says I want nothing more to do with you. God says, you know what? I'm going to take care of you, look after you, in, in your next life even until you turn to me. And again and again and again. For however many again, lives again, it takes. Again. You have to come back tomorrow night. I'm going to take coming. care of you. Do you know who I am now? I don't know who you are. Come okay. back tomorrow night. But do you know who I am now? I don't know who you are. Come back tomorrow yeah. night. The thing it's is, just, what you're talking about is... a nasty the, bouncer. Okay, no, 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 no. Because when you walk inside that, hot, uh, that place that you're going to meet God, you're going to know God, right? Agree. Agree. Look, not, maybe. You, no, no. What you're talking about Does is God walk around no, no, heaven no, saying, "I'm God, question. everyone. I'm no, no. God. Hello, okay. I'm God. I but created you." Let's just assume. No. I hope not. Let's just assume that everybody in heaven knows God. It's okay. a fair assumption to make, right? No, it's not, not a fair not, assumption. It's not a wild one. We can, we can it's not do a wild it, like, assumption. You walk into heaven, you get to know God, right? Fair enough. Only if God's vain. In the okay. No, 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 no. Let's not. You're saying. You're saying. Make me a heaven without even God there. I actually think that really. That's what you're saying. Really speaking. Is he what he's saying? He's saying. I don't even want to have. I want to have a heaven with no God. I'll do that. Yeah. What do you actually, want? Heaven with no God. Because if, if God wasn't there, he would just stay away. He would have, he would give you, all right. he would give you paradise. He would say, well done for your good life. Okay. Well done for helping all your right. fellow human beings. What kind of paradise do you want? Women? How many women do you want? Alcohol? Wine? What kind of paradise? What are you talking about? I'm asking you a question. You say, no, give you paradise. What kind of paradise do you want? I don't know. Enlightenment? Bliss? Enlightenment? Nice. Ah. All right. Well, you can't have that because enlightenment is part of knowing God. Because God's the only truth. But God could make it the other way. You're saying, no, God, you can't, you can't say, God, make me a world where I can have enlightenment, where I get to know the truth, i.e. you, but I don't know you. I'm you're not, asking I for the impossible. A, again, you're playing with words. You, I'm playing not playing with words. Wow. You're playing with you words. So God can't be in enlightenment without, without informing you of who he is. Because what is the truth that you want to be enlightened to? God. Oh, that's well, the about, truth. What, about, what, what about is bliss? the truth? What about bliss? Yeah, God's the bliss. It's the word God that's loaded, isn't it? That's yeah, the, the, God, the word God is loaded. The fact you're is, just, the truth and the bliss. Weak, the Buddhists have the nirvana. Is the same thing? Without the truth and the bliss. It seems like you're so sensitive. Look. You either want the truth and the bliss, or you don't want the truth and the bliss. God is the truth and the bliss. It's the word God. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, Fair what, could you say nirvana using a Buddhist term or not? Well, the thing with what we don't like about Buddhism is they have no God. There's no central but figure that you well, have. It's, 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 it's more spiritualism. Look, you can't, uh, in finishing, like I said, you can't have the truth and the bliss because God is the truth and the bliss. You're saying, I don't want it. He's made it that way, right? That's the vanity. That's the vanity. No, it's not the vanity. He made enlightenment. It's, it's, it's the love. Way. It's and the you love. Have to be like, God yeah, loves you, you just like you love You're God. Not the point. What if? Okay. Just, point. Would, would it be fair to say? Okay. Let me compare to somebody suffering from cancer, just for a second. Somebody suffering from cancer. Okay. And you're saying that I should be able to cure them from the cancer, but I don't. It's not fair to take the cancer away from them. No, what I'm saying. Well, let's let's use no, that no, analogy. Because yeah. I want to take that analogy a bit further and explain yeah, to you why I'll, I'm saying I'll, that. I'll, explain okay. what, I'll, explain how I'll give you all the time to answer it. Just let me finish it. Yeah. So there's a person suffering from cancer. You're saying I want you to take the cancer away from me, make me perfectly healthy, but don't make me perfectly healthy. No. And don't what take I'm, away the cancer from me. So what I'm doing is I'm saying that I don't. You say I got cancer, right? And the, the cancer doctor comes in. And the cancer doctor says, do you believe in cancer medicine? And I say, no, I don't think it works, right? And they say, would you want to take it anyway? I say, yeah, I'll take it anyway, right? But the doctor then would go, well, if you don't believe in it, you can't have it. You have to die of cancer. I would say, no, I would say, no matter what they say, whether they say, I'm a, I'm a herbalist, I'm a okay. holist, they'd say, well, if you want to take the medicine, you want to be better, here you go. That's that's true, unconditional love. And the Fair same, enough. And also, GlaxoSmithKline wouldn't turn up and say, hey, oh, money. you took some of my medicine. They'd say, hey, you took my, you took my medicine. Who is, do you know my name? I'm Brian, the cancer doctor. Do you know who I am? So I don't know who you are. So give me that chemotherapy back then. Okay. You can't have it. Come back right. tomorrow when you've Here's learned about thing. God. Okay. Me. So the medicine, the medicine was a was a method, right? I know. I but know. the aim was to be fully healthy. Agreed. I'm saying right. fully healthy means to know God. Right, but God right. has made it that way. Yeah. So you're not letting no, me no, respond. But, but that is your true right nature. Over. That's your true nature. Because God made it that way. No, because you are God. Because God ah. made it that way. You are God. You are God. Your, your soul is God. The light inside you that's is God. That's a big difference. Again, this is just, this is just a kind of Gnostic rambling. You want to get healthy. This is, this is kind of that's you pantheism. You want to get healthy without right? trying to get healthy. This is just this you is are just God, innit? You're part of God. That's no, who your I'm real not. light is. Yes, is just, that is what God... That's what Sikhism believes. You're saying you're trying to impose your view upon us. I'm saying a perfectly it's healthy just, person in Sikhi is one that knows God because they are part of God. They're in union, They know themselves. Yeah. Know thyself, you want to say. 
you get to the point where you can just say, hey man, you are God. God is within all of us. Just, yeah. It means nothing. It's the word right? God, it's loaded. It also it's means something. God. It's not even wrong, as they say. It's it means nothing to you, but it means something to someone. It's, it's not right. It's not even wrong. It's just a, just a thing you can say when someone's attacking your but, religion. But, going back to your question, if full health involves knowing that you're part of God and you're one and the same, then, in order for you to get cured, that knowledge must come into you. So, my response, as I've responded quite a few times now, my response would be, why has God created it in such a way that health is to know God? That's because you are, you are God. Okay. I'm not God. No, no. That's, that, no. You, you might not know that you're God, but you are. Okay. We're not going to agree on this. We're not going to agree upon this. We're not going to agree on this. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. Let's just understand. You are one with God. If everybody's God, how do you justify it? Why is God fighting wars? It's the people that don't know that they're God. Because God is neither good nor bad at that level.